All right. Who's Pucky? All right. Who's Pucky? And how did Kanika end up with an Adidas jacket on in the freezer? Or on the gurney, as her mother stated. So first thing first, we're going to go with Pucky. Now, I just want to say, I was not looking for Pucky in the way that I found him until I got to the statements and the statements led me to a certain time frame. And when I got to that time frame, I didn't find him as I expected. So we're going to get into that and let me, um, we're going to go into further details and you're going to see what I mean by something that I didn't expect. All right. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you probably didn't expect it either. Or you probably did expect it just by, let me chill. All right. So again, you already know all my case numbers and all that stuff. There's in type. If you go to the website, you will run right into these files it's in the um the narrative files all right so this right here this statement this is the statement that led me to pluck it this statement is p's child's mother statement this is p's child's mother she was there all right. So as follows, September 19, 2017, at approximately 12:45 hours. So that would be uh, that would be in the afternoon. Okay, the officers attempted to locate and interview so the sus at a residence in Chicago. Allen was not present at the time. Allen is who this statement is and i'm going to show you a picture of alan um as a matter of fact let me go ahead and show it to you now this is alan all right that is alan So, Alan was present at the time. We then made contact with Sutton Shucks via phone, blank, blank, stated she was near Jackson and Campbell. So, we proceeded to the location and met with her near the intersection. And an interview was conducted where she stated the following in summary and not verbatim. Alan went to the Crown Plaza and Rosemont around in room 926 for a part in approximately 130 hours on 9917. She went to the location with such and such who drove her four door white vehicle to the party. Was unable to, uh, see, Alan was, was uh, yeah, Alan was unable to provide a make, model, or addition information regarding the vehicle. She offered a phone number of such and such for. Blank, blank, and Facebook name of blah, blah, blah. His friend was invited to the party through her as it was a celebration for Irene's birthday. Uh, Allen stated she did not know Kanika Jenkins and may have seen her around the neighborhood but was not familiar with her. Again, this is P's child's mother. But she don't know Kanika, but P's is real, real familiar with Kanika. This is his one of his homeboys, old lady. You see what I'm saying? Like Kanika is P's homeboy, old lady, and P's homeboy was currently locked up. You see what I'm saying? He didn't have until another week to uh, to get out. All right, but she, Ben P's child's mother, don't even know Kanika. All right. And the reason why I'm keep saying it like that because. A lot of times these gang members, they girl, 
are sometimes affiliated with the gang and know all the guys and no other females that they hang with or know the guys and I mean this is your your child's father homeboy old lady see what, see what I mean but let's get to it at the party Alan advised she observed Jen uh, Jenkins sitting on or near the bed drinking liquor out of a cup and socializing with with folks she was unaware of any additional information regarding Jenkins and her actions that evening because she wasn't paying attention to her uh, Alan stated the party was busy with people which she approximate, approximated over 20 to 30 people she further stated that drugs and liquor were at the party all right, same old stuff, pills and smoke weed, but was unable to, um, the type of pills. Hmm, she knew the group at the party to use pills and smoke weed, but okay. All right, so she somewhat is admitting that the pills was there. Everybody else, they are like, well, I don't know if it was pills there or not. Out of 30 people, everybody keeps saying they don't know if pills was there or not. Gotcha. Uh, Alan knew there was marijuana being passed around as blunts, but could not recall seeing any other drugs. All right. Informed me that she was not intoxicated and did not drink, smoke, or do any drugs at the party because she is breastfeeding. All right. Uh, and then she did call the party a kickback. Okay. Alan advised that the party was a kickback and very chill. Right, uh, resided no special activity. Alan stated she remembered females. Now, this is here is uh, Shamaya and Bri I mean, Shamaya and uh, Shamaya and Monifa. All right, Alan stated she remembers females, Shamaya and, and Monifa, saying they could not locate Jenkins. She advised that people from the party assisted, assisted in locating her, but then thought nothing of it. She left the party with such and such sometimes between 4 and 5 in the morning. When questioned regarding additional um, subjects at the party, oh, let me see. Well, we'll get to that. Hopefully. Additional subjects at the party. I'm just saying uh, when Alan left. Because I... Let me see. Let me see if I even... All right, we'll do that. 438. I think this is her coming down the hallway. All right, so we're just going to sort of glance at that. And she's saying that she left with two people. Okay. All right, she's saying she left with two people. One, two. Because remember, Ty and Pease, they kind of stayed behind with Shamaya, Bri Bri, and, um, and uh, Monifa. Bring that back a little bit. Alright. So I'm thinking this is her right here. And she left with two people. This is P's. Next is baby mom. No one talking about. Alright. Sometime before between four and five in the morning. When question regarding additional subjects at the party, Adam provided this uh descriptors for Pucky. And this is how I ran into Pucky. Alright. I mean I've been running into Pucky. I mean anybody who been on this case since the beginning or damn near the beginning, you know about Pucky, Winky, 
and Quan. You know what I mean? You you know the pictures, all that. All right. So um, this is the part that got me searching because I never really felt the need to really look into Pucky and them. You know what I'm saying? I did read their statements before, but it was like okay to use you saying the same thing everybody else saying. And plus, you was a cousin to Kanika, and you know what I'm saying. All y'all was uh, was brothers. You know what I'm saying? But then she described, Alan described what Pucky had on. So me, I'm like, well, let me see if I can find him in the footage. Pucky is wearing a jean jacket and white fisherman hat. She also provided a number for peas as blank, 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 and stated he is her baby's data. All right, Allen stated he goes from home to home, but would advise him to call Rosemont Police or provide her my contact information at the first. All right, so this is what led me to Pucky. All right, so we're going to go to, I think this is Winky's statement, stated that he knew Kanika since she was a baby. Blah, 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 stated that he went to the hotel party with his brother Quan. All right, this is Winky. Winky said he went to the went to the hotel with his brother Quan, but when they got there, Pucky was already there, so Pucky didn't come to the hotel with Quan and Winky. You feel me? He left. Okay. Left the room. Oh, let me see. Kanika left the room. Him and his two brothers, Quan and the Pucky, left the party. Okay. So he left with them. But Pucky was already there before. Uh, before Quan and Winky. I'm looking for for when Winky stated that. All right, Winky didn't state that. Oh, I think Quan stated it. Y'all bear with me. Okay, here we go. So, Quan was at the party in Rosemont, uh, Crown Plaza in room, in room 926. Uh, on the ninth, he arrived with brother Winky. So, this is... This is Quan saying he came with Winky. The same way Winky say he came with Quan, right? Around two o'clock. Okay, this two in the morning on the night. Okay. Quan's other brother, Pucky, was already at the party. Okay, he was already at the party. So if Quan and Winky came around two. When did Pucky get there? You see what I'm saying? Obviously, it was before 2 o'clock. Right? Okay. And, of course, they all said the same thing. Let me see. Had just left with... Okay, let see. He advised that some began to look for her, but then thought she had just left with another friend. Uh, what about I say? What, what I said? Quan does not remember when he left the party, but left with brother Winky. He said that there were people in and out, and a lot of people in the room, but could not provide an approximate number. Uh, he advised that everyone was cool and you know, same old shit. All right, so back to Pike. So if Corn and Winky came in around by two, what time did Pucky come in? Right? Well, we're gonna be fair. We're gonna get to Pucky. Now I know you're like, man, what is it to be fair about? You know what I'm saying? Just a time frame. 
You want to see what I'm talking about in a minute. Um, conducted an interview with Puckett. All right, y'all see this. Let me slide up to the top so y'all can see that talk. All right. Puckett attended a party in Rosemont 99, approximately 1.30. Okay, so he got there possibly 1.30. Um, he proceeded to the hotel with cousin TT. Uh, his friends with Irene and group of friends and saw it at the. Uh, okay. All right. Same old shit. 30 people in the room. That magic number is 30. Everybody use that magic number 30. I don't know if that's. Just the officer using that as an estimated, uh, an estimated um number. Just you know by by being verbatim, or um, what are they really saying? It was about thirty people in the room. Who knows? So one thirty, right? So let's get to this because I got a whole lot more shit. Got a whole lot more shit to go to. All right, so uh, let's see, one thirty, one thirty, one thirty. All right, so let's find this at one thirty. As a matter of fact, he said one thirty, but I recorded something else, so I documented something else. Y'all bear with me. Y'all bear with me. Okay, he said about 130. I got him at 156. Now, again, Alan said, peace, baby mama, said that he had on a jean jacket and <clears throat> a white fisherman hat. Okay? A white fisherman hat. So, I documented all the people that had on the white fisherman hat or something close to it. Alright. So I got the ties crew. I said, well, damn man, well, um, old boy had on the white hat. Alright. So we're gonna go there just to be fair. Just to be fair. Alright. Tell me I said I was. All right, 147. So let's go and slide over here to 147. Didn't see no white hat over there, right? Okay, now we know this is peas. This ain't Pucky. We already know that. And that ain't even no jean jacket he got on. You see what I'm saying? But that is a fisherman's hat. This also is a fisherman's hat. And it's white. But he don't have on a jean jacket. He got on an Adidas jacket. Alright? And Pucky didn't say he came in with, with uh, a tie. Anyway. So, they excluded. They excluded. Mike, Mike, little homie, right? Let me see where I spotted him at. We got Mike, Mike, little homie. And I forgot when they came in. I know they came in on... Um, so we got Mike, Mike, little homie, you know what I'm saying? He also got on a fisherman hat. I speak this thing up. But we know this is not him. All right? We already have the names. You see what I'm saying? The babies, the nefs, the, the little ties. You see what I'm saying? The, the uh, uh, killer, Tiffy. We already have the names, okay? He came in with teeth in them, all right? So this ain't Pucky. This ain't Pucky. 
And as you can see, I did my documentation, meaning I ran, I, w I went through the footage, right? I went through all the footage. Looking for this jean jacket and white fisherman hat. So, according to this time frame, like you say, it came in around 1.30. So, I got here. I said it was 156. Okay. So when I got here, this is when I spotted Puckett. Blew my mind because I never thought this would be Puckett. All right. All right, so slow it down a minute. Do y'all see this? This is Pucky. Now, what I'm gonna do uh, did I do that? Uh, yeah, I did that. All right, give me a second. What the fuck? I just do it like this. All right, so uh, this right here, this is this is this is put. All right, this is Winky and this is Quan. Quan, Winky, Pucky. Now, I'm not here to judge nobody and do what you do. You know, you understand, but he does look a little more fruitier than the rest of the brothers. You see what I'm saying? Like the rest of the brothers look like a couple of hard heads. When it come to Pucky, why lie? This is what you have. So it's not far fetched to what we are witnessing here that Pucky is, you know, one of the girls. Shot she out of me, but it's not far fetched, right? Let's put a little magnifying on this. And I'm only doing this because not only it just it shocked me, but you know what I mean? Like, well, maybe this is the reason why um Winky and Quan didn't come to the party with him. You know what I'm saying? They know that Pucky always got his own agenda on things. You understand? Um now you don't really get a clear footage from this 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 uh yeah you don't really get a clear image of that that particular footage but what you do get and I'll show you you do get a better footage I mean a, a better image on another part of this footage when they were leaving And so I'm like, well, damn, mom. Um, so Pucky, one of the girls, and shit. You know? Had us food. I'm 
looking for one of the guys. All right. All right, we're going to slow it down. Brain bite the mic fire. All right, here you go, right here. So yeah, he's the one that's holding the other tranny. All right, let's pause this. Let's pause this. Let's get another visual. Did it pause? Yeah. Let's get another visual of him here. All right. Look at the, the shape, the structure of the eyes, right? The structure of the eyes, the long chin, okay? All right, and let's go back to this footage. Can you see it? Can you imagine it? Can you picture it? Is that pucky or not? Looking right at you. See the fuzz at the chin? Come on, that's 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 pucky all day. Alright. You can rewind it back if you want. Look at it again. <laughs> I had to do the same. All right. So Pucky is one of the girls. And so by this, you know, by this popping up like this, because like I said, I didn't know. You know what I mean? I thought it was one of the fellas. I'm looking for one of the fellas, but then I'm thinking about the name too, like, fuck it, puck it. Like, who names a street nigga like that? And then you got Quam and Winky. You know, I still haven't really spotted Quam and Winky. I don't even think I want to no more. You know what I'm saying? But these are supposed to be the cousins of Kanika. All right, these are supposed to be the cousins of Kanika, and they say they they blooded cousins. Uh, cousins. A lot of people who was um who mentioned them said that they were blood cousins to Kanika. You feel me? And this is why I wonder why Kanika was able to be put in the position she was in when she had relatives there. Hmm? And then I also seen a statement too where they were saying that Kanika was getting ready for a job so she would not have taken any drugs other than drinking. Right, because she didn't want that stuff in her system to mess her job up. So why was she put in that position when she have relatives there? And we need to find out what really happened to this guy. What really happened right here? Pucky was concerned. You know? It's not a headache. 
You see what I'm saying? We all know that no one at the party was fucked up, fucked up, other than Kanika. No one was highly intoxicated other than Kanika. We didn't see anybody else stumbling around and acting crazy and, you know, holding themselves up against the wall and all this other stuff. And we didn't see none of that in nobody else. She was the only one highly intoxicated. So, this is not, well, I don't think this is a headache. I think this is a, a, a boom, ping, pow. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? But maybe we'll run into that. But everybody said it was chill, calm. You know, I mean, everybody can't just come up with that same scenario with the same words and again this the stuff is not verbatim right it's just something that the police jotted down and then put put back in his own words but still though everybody agreeing to it it was just a calm night I think it was the opposite I think it was the reverse alright so let's move forward let's move forward all right now this is the statement of smiley smiley is the one who we kept seeing in the lobby with the pink uh bandana around her head I think it was pink or purple or whatever and um we also seen in the bathroom a lot of people been saying that looks like Lenora looks like Lenora hey sometimes I even said myself I don't know man that looks like Lenora you know what I'm saying but here is a statement from that person they go by the name of Smiley alright now I'm pretty sure because you y'all have to remember now the police officers also interviewed Lenora. So I'm pretty sure Lenora wouldn't act like somebody else in front of the damn police and say, hey, here I am right here on the footage. You know what I'm saying? And make it seem like you're somebody totally different. I mean, then that would be putting you right in the position of being the fucking suspect the number one prime suspect like this motherfucker's playing a double role first you you use a sister you wasn't there now you come in as somebody named smiley and direct us straight to the person as smiley on footage like that that wouldn't make sense it would be stupid unless you know that the whole damn police department is in on the shit and you just have no risk involved and you don't care so I, I highly doubt that she would do a double take like that in front of the police so that it, it just couldn't have been Lenora All right, it just couldn't have been Lenora. Unless, like some people are saying, it really is a production. All right? Unless it really is a production. So let's get into this. So like I say, go by the name of Smiley, right? You see it right there. Go by the name of Smiley. And let me get rid of this. She describes herself as having been dressed in a blue jean jacket, pink shirt, and also wearing a tie-dye headband. Okay. Smiley stated to me that she was standing next to Kanika Jenkins. 
Smiley also stated that she was in the bathroom video where Kanika was standing behind her. I don't remember seeing her in that bathroom footage. Maybe she was just in the bathroom footage, but a little off the camera. Because Kanika was standing at the door. Actually, she was standing against the door. You know how the doors open and the doors leaning on the wall and Kanika was standing against the door. So she could have been on the outside of that door, like sort of in the hallway. But she's calling it standing behind her. But she have described the person, Smiley, in the footage. And we're going to get to that. straight to it thought I'd be able to find it just slide it As a matter of fact, let's go to, um, let me see. Okay, I said he came in at 156. Because they came in a little before Pucky did. Yeah, y'all seen Bree slide in and peek downstairs. She peeked downstairs a lot. All right. Here's the jean jacket, pink shirt. Tie headband. All right. That's smiling. So that's not uh, Lenore, all right? It's just not Lenore. I mean, like I say, unless it's a full production and everybody is in on it. Other than that, if 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 not, then Lenore would be stupid to try to play a double in front of the police. You know what I'm saying? First, I'm her sister. Then I come and show you me as somebody else and say that I'm smiling. You know what I mean? That would be uh. Suicidal, if you will. So, uh, let me see anything else here. Now, of course, she did state something about, um, the damn security guard coming in and what people were saying about him. It says here, follow my cursor, when asked if she recalled anyone coming to the hotel room, hold on, give me a second. Uh, okay, when asked if she Recalled anyone coming to the hotel room. Smiley stated that there was someone knocking at the door. But she did not see who it was. Alright. She stated, because she was in the bathroom, apparently. Right. She stated that she believed it to be a hotel employee of some type. Now watch this. She overheard someone saying, damn, how many times are you going to come to the door? You know what I'm saying? 
Like, damn, how many times you gonna come to the door? You know what I'm saying? So she felt that from hearing that exclamation that someone had come to the hotel numerous times earlier in the evening. All right? Because remember, this is around about the time they just did not get in, you know what I'm saying? The party started to just jump a little bit, whatever. So apparently... It was some, like they say, according to the, yesterday. If you go back to that video when I was when I did the statements about the rooms, okay, look at the time frame. The first complaint of the noise, and then look at the time frame she's coming coming in, okay, close to two o'clock, right. So she probably just barely missed the first time that the. the you know what I'm saying? The other person came, the security or whoever the employee was, came to that door. She probably just barely missed it. You see what I'm saying? If I'm not mistaken. So, again, she was wondering, um, you know, how many times they actually came to the door by hearing them say what they said. About damn, how many times you won't come to the door? You know what I'm saying? So, she also stated that whoever answered the hotel room door, watch this. She also stated that whoever answered the hotel room door was cracking jokes with the employee. Hmm? They was cracking jokes with the employee. Hmm. Shall we go to that footage? Y'all want to? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Now, we um had a few people saying that during this particular part of the footage there was obviously some kind of fight or something going on at the door but if you just listen to the background don't always pay so much attention to the footage all the time by just watching it you have to also listen and see if it makes sense when you listen and watch at the same time you feel what I'm saying so let's listen to this as we, I can't really determine who was at the door actually to even say who was joking with the employee. But I want y'all to listen to this. This part right here. Somebody at the door? Listen. It says the manager. Somebody at the door? It says the manager. Listen. See, that's not no confrontation going on at that deck. I mean, at the um, at the front door. You see what I'm saying? That's somebody peeking out the door and identifying the person on the other side of the door as the manager okay so they somebody in the bank is saying something to the person at the door is is that somebody at the door saying it's the manager this is the conversation that's going on listen Now, Smiley, Smiley, the one with the headband, she's going to run in the bathroom. She was one of the ones that ran in the bathroom. And I, I think I made a video about this and, stayed in, and showed y'all. 
these people was at the door doing whatever it was they were doing, partying, smoking, however. They heard the knock at the door. So they ran to the bathroom. There was no fight and no confrontation at this part of the footage. You see her? You seen her again? You see it? Just keep, you look between Kanika. You gonna see the headband. Now I'm gonna try to pause it. Just missed it. Right there, boom. Headband, black pants, jean jacket, that's her. She's about to run in the bathroom because somebody's knocking at the door. All right, so that's smiling, okay? And uh, like she say, she was right there by the bathroom. She was right there by Kanika. You see what I'm saying? That's in the statement. All right? That's in the statement. Let me see one more thing. Uh... Okay, um, Smiley stated that when her group was walking out of the hotel party, more people, guys, were going into the hotel for the party. I then asked if she had ever heard of the name, watch this, of Kiana Maids. Now, we all know Bree Bree's last name is Maids, right? A Brianna Mays. So why is the police asking about a Kiana Mays? Then, watch this. Right before he asked her that, he asked her if there was anyone at the party that she knew. She stated that a boy named such and such was there as well as such and such. I asked her if I could uh, show her a picture of individuals who rented the room. She stated that she would attempt to identify them. After providing her with the picture of the two subjects renting the room, she was unable to identify the subjects. And this is when he asked her about Kiana Mays. Right, stated that when she was walking out of the hotel with her and her little crew, more people, guys, were going into the hotel for the party. I then asked if she had ever heard of the name Kiana Mays. So what does that mean, Kiana Mays? A Brianna Mays, Kiana Mays. You know what I mean? Like this is like almost going hand in hand now. Now they calling out names that similar to Bree Bree shit. You see what I'm saying? But even though it was on her tail, nothing happened. Including all the shit that we didn't witnessed already. You see what I'm saying? And I'm gonna tell y'all something also. A lot of times when we be doing these little investigation things on uh, the internet or whatever the case may be at home, however, it don't have to be on the internet, but things that we discover, sometimes the cops just don't discover that shit. Sometimes they don't have enough time to pay attention to that shit because they are not secluded to one case all the time. You see what I mean? It be so much shit going on and then also you have to understand that these people are human. 
So sometimes they're going to try to take shortcuts. You see what I mean? That's why private detectives are more efficient than the police or a regular detectives at a police station. Private detectives are more efficient because they really take time to see what the fuck is up. You see what I'm saying? Majority of them are getting paid and they really take the time to figure it out. They really love their job. They really take time to figure it out. Private eyes, private detectives. And that's what she should have gotten from the jump, a private detective. Because that lawyer, that was one thing, but he he's not a detective. He's just a lawyer. He's just somebody who knows, <clears throat> he's just somebody who knows law. You see what I'm saying? And he can strategize how you can get some bread or how, whatever. You see what I'm saying? How you can just win the case and put people in jail and stuff like that. He understands the strategies of law, but that doesn't make him a financial law uh, officer. You see what I mean? It's not going to happen. You need a private detective. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm a private detective, even though I'm doing it in the privacy of my own home. But still, private detectives pay more attention to certain details that other officers or regular police officers or police detectives seem to not really have time to do. It's just, you know, it's just what it is. So anyway, let's get to, um, let's see. Let's get to this uh, Adidas jacket. What's up with the Adidas jacket? I keep hearing everybody keep talking about this Adidas jacket. See, I'm Adidas jacket. And I'm steady looking through, you know, looking through my little Mike the fire, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I don't see no jean jacket. But she said it was a jean jacket. And everybody keeps saying that she said it was a jean jacket. So let's get on to this. Because this is where the juicy shit at. I mean, it's more to it than just a jean jacket in this statement here. This statement here is like, wow, didn't know that. Wow, didn't see that coming. So let's check it out. So it all starts off as this officer, you can read it for yourself. This officer is, you know, going to the crime scene or going, let me see what date was this. It was 11. Yeah, okay, so upon my arrival to the scene, I met with on-duty patrol personnel, including Lieutenant Rivera, uh, Rivera 1450 and Sergeant Pawinski. All right. So he went to the scene and they was giving him a descriptive of what was going on, you know what I mean, how this happened, blah, blah, blah. And this is what he's stating. All right. You can read through this this part yourself. This is uh, about Kanika going to the party, you know, using a mama vehicle, you know, stuff like that. And, um, see, Kanika last had a contact with her family at approximately 1.30. Now, if you do not remember, the contact that they are talking about that Kanika had at 1.30 with one of her family members was when she texted, I'm ready to go. Remember? That's what she texted. I'm ready to go. Now, did she make a phone call at that time? Don't know. You know, they didn't they, they, they didn't state that. They just said that she had contact, and the only contact that they provided us was text message. I'm ready to go. So Lenora claimed that she never had any contact. Of course, the mom 
She never had any contact. So, what I'm trying to figure out is, what made them say that Lenora is the one that had any contact, or what made them even say that she had family, uh, she had contact with any of her family members in a way at that time? Now I know on the um on the phone calls or um when they was talking to the officers on the dispatch calls. If I'm not mistaken, I can't remember. God damn, it's been a minute. If Lenora admitted that she had contact with her sister or something, something like that. But later on, you know, Lenora denied it. She denied it. Matter of fact, she denied it in um in a in uh in an interview. On video, when they, when they first, you know, was doing a little protesting and stuff like that. The matter of fact, this is way before, this is before they actually formed a protesting uh, group or whatever. You know, they were still at the crime scene, you know, showing their ass, trying to get some answers. The news was out on, on the site and, you know, they was interviewing Lenora and Lenora, she, you know, the lady asked was you the one that had last contact with her? Lenora said no. Lenora said no. So, is this a text that Lenora didn't know she got? Or did someone just assume that this contact was a family member? Because I'm thinking maybe this text went to Bree. Because Bree was the only one. I mean, I don't see why she would even text her mom or her, her sister and say I'm ready to go if they're nowhere near Rosemont. The only person that I can think of that she would say I'm ready to go to or text I'm ready to go to is Bree because Bree's the only one out of the damn room and Bree's the one that came to the hotel with her, right? Bree came to the hotel with her, Shamaya came to the hotel with her, Monifa came to the hotel with her. But Shemaya and Monifa was in the room with her, allegedly. So, Bree is the only one that I see her texting, I'm ready to go. I won't even see the benefit of her texting her family members saying I'm ready to go. Especially when you're not even saying why you're ready to go, what's wrong, nothing like that, you just I'm ready to go. I'm thinking that she maybe just texting that to Bree. I don't know. So, uh, Kanika's sister, Lenora, reported Kanika's friends arrived back at Kanika's residence with Kanika's mother's vehicle at approximately 4 o'clock on the 9th. Now, this is the reason why they told Lenora to stay quiet because they didn't show up at that front door with no car at no four o'clock okay I still got them on footage at roughly five o'clock still walking the halls alright so it, it, it's no way Matter of fact, let me show you. There was like five o two ish. Yeah, this down right here. Boom. Yep, 502. Mm 
Know what I mean? So even if this clock was wrong, right? Like so many like to say that this clock is an hour forward. Even if we push this clock back an hour and it's at 4.02, they're still here. They are still here. They're not at nobody's front door with a car at four o'clock. So even if you push this clock back one hour, they are still at the same very spot in the hotel. They're not in Chicago. They're still in Rosemont. So this is the reason why they told Lenora, shh, because you're saying all the wrong things. All right. And that's why Lenora went quiet. Let me see. Um, Kanika's friends stated they lost Kanika at the hotel and could not find her after searching. Okay. All right, so Lenora and Mr. Teresa arrived at the hotel to search for Kanika. Let me see. After initial attempts to locate Kanika yielded negative results, a manager for the hotel was able to locate Kanika on video surveillance. After the manager was able to narrow down the search area, okay, all right. See this stuff we already know, all right? We already know this stuff. Go down. We also informed the occupants of room 926 had already checked out of the hotel and no attendees from the hotel party was were, were on the premises. Additionally, room 926 had already been cleaned by housekeeping. Now, that, that right there, that baffled me when I first read that. Because I was like, if you, I'm pretty sure y'all know for a fact that 926 is the room in question. Okay, this is the room that these subjects or these kids or these party goers had. They had room 926. Their friend is missing or some friend of, of, of the party goers is missing. They were in room 926. Why would you go in there and start cleaning shit up right away when you know there's possible evidence of foul play? You don't know. Matter of fact, the police should have been telling them, hey, whatever room they was in, don't touch it. That should not have been a mistake. But they cleaned it up right away. That baffled me. You know what I mean? And then not only that, if you go back to the to the uh, to the video what I just did about the rooms, the statements, right? Nine twenty four, they couldn't find any contact, and the phone number that they had was out of service, and that particular room nine twenty four that was right next to nine twenty six was booked online, and all of a sudden the phone number that y'all had as contact is out of service. So this further proves that they had two rooms. And those two rooms was right next to each other. 926 is the room that they was booking at the desk. All right. Let's see. During preliminary investigation, shortly after my arrival to the scene, cameras located Okay, inform me a security camera is located in the kitchen area where the freezer is located. Okay. Uh, Rivera stated officers was currently with hotel management reviewing the video surveillance. After speaking with uh, Lieutenant Rivera, PSO, Lobianco, however you say his name, 1483 provided me with an update of what he observed on video surveillance. All right.
studios, everything you can walk by itself through the kitchen area. Okay, you already know that. All right, let me see. PSO LeBianco stated Kanika is not observed entering the freezer on video surveillance. Andrew said she was because the freezer door is out of view on camera. And you know, somewhat it is. You can see a crack of the door. You know what I'm saying? I showed y'all this. You can buy, see the crack of the door, you know what I mean? I showed y'all this. All right. So, Kanika had approximately 20 friends and families at the scene. We asked Kanika, Kanika's mother to speak with us in private, in a private conference room, O'Hare 2, off the main lobby of the hotel. Um, she, yeah, she was also accompanied by a female who stated she was Kanika's aunt. Once inside the conference room, Deputy Chief Kukuka, or Kukoka, offered our condolences and informed uh, her daughter, Kanika, was found deceased at the hotel. Miss Teresa became very upset and ran out of the hotel. Okay, so they're telling you where she ran from, all right? She ran from that conference room. They're telling you why she ran out of there, okay? Because they gave her the bad news. This is in the statement, all right? I seen that. You know, at the beginning, people was like, man, that's the kitchen, that's the kitchen. She ran out of the kitchen after seeing the body. Because all we had at the time was... You know a little bit of the footage and of course we had that you know when they put on the gurney and stuff like that and um Miss Teresa walking in or whatever and then we had got the footage about her running out of the room or whatever you know what I'm saying so it was like people were putting that together and saying that that conference room was the kitchen so what I did was I went and did my little research on the building itself right where the rooms at stuff like that the commandments right and i also did the um i got out of the files the blueprint of the building coming to find out there was no kitchen in that particular area all right the area that she ran out out of was not the kitchen so that's when I started going, you know, a little further into, um, you know, finding out what each room was and things like that. You see what I'm saying? Because I just got tired of being had by other people, you know, just stating all kind of wild, crazy shit. And they haven't even really did any research on what they're talking about. You see what I'm saying? So, let me see, y'all. Uh, Yeah, she got upset and ran out of the hotel. Upon seeing her reaction, other fr other other friends and family also ran out of the hotel. Myself and the fellow officers on scene followed the family outside of the hotel and attempted to console them. I spoke with Kanika's grandmother in the parking lot in front of the main lobby. After speaking with her or him or whoever, I spoke with the sudden surgeon and provided her with details of Kanika's death known at the time, uh, so his so boyfriend, blah, 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 was also present at the scene. That might be James that he's talking about, um, Mr. Reese's boyfriend. Um, after speaking with Kanika's family, I spoke with her such assistant general manager for the hotel, uh, offered a private conference room. for the family to stay as preliminary investiga investigation continued. Additionally, such and such offered food and beverages to the family. I informed the family of, I informed such and such of such and such offer. Initially declined food and drink, but then requested water. 
I wouldn't even request that. Hotel staff then retrieved beverages for us and such and her family. During a uh, preliminary investigation, Detective Roshan Fecker. Hey, it's a fucked up name, so I fucked it up. And I met with the following hotel employees and such. Assistant General Manager, blah, 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 Director of Food and Beverages, and blah, 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 Front Desk Supervisor. I need to read that again. And I met with the following hotel employee, Assistant General Manager, Director of Food and Beverages, Front Desk Supervisor. Employees stated the hotel will cooperate in any way to help in the investigation. I requested all video surveillance potentially related to this incident. Now, here's the kicker. Such and such was provided with a flash drive and downloaded available camera angles of Kanika at that time onto the flash drive. Blank stated it will take additional time <laughs> uh, to sort through all video surveillance, but he will begin working on it immediately. And that's where the bullshit start with the footage. That's where the bullshit start with the footage. Because First of all, you are not supposed to be asking any employees for uh, for you to put particular footage on a flash drive. That is just fucking wrong. It's absolutely out of order and it's wrong. You do not ask employees at a building that a crime or a possible crime has been committed. A death has been, has happened. You don't ask the employees of that building to give you particular and then put it on a fucking flash drive. Did you really do that? Did you really do that? This is in your statement. You're telling us that this is what the fuck you did. These could be the possible murderers. But you asked them to put it on a flash drive. Yeah, yeah, just go ahead and uh, put uh, whatever you feel that we need to know. We just put it on the flash drive and we'll... No, you ask for the whole drive. Where is it? So we can snatch it up. As a matter of fact, don't even ask us. Don't even tell us where is that. Just tell us where the computer at. We'll find the drive from there. You get the whole hard drive. You don't ask them to put particular, see, Mr. Rogers, the lawyer, where the fuck is your brains? Do you not know that they're not supposed to do that? That's not normal procedures. You don't ask potential fucking suspects to put particular footage on a goddamn flash drive. Bitch, I ain't went through no motherfucking law school, but I know that. Oh my fucking God. I can't believe this shit.
I requested all video surveillance from the hotel during the following time frame, 21. Man, fuck you, man. Fuck you. The folio for room 926 showed the following guest and reservation information. Guest name, blank, arrival date, the 7th, departure date, the 9th. Later investigation revealed the room was fraudulently reserved with such information and visa account ending in blah, blah, blah. Reference associated narratives for further details. Reference associated narratives for further details of fraudulent activity identity theft. Video surveillance from the hotel showed Kanika Jenkins enter the hotel through a rear entrance. We already know all that. Based on witness statement, Kanika then went up to room 926. You know that. And it does say Kanika does not appear to be impaired or under any distress. You already know that. Now, here's another kicker. Based on witness statements, Kanika then went up to room 926 for a hotel party and left the room after 3 o'clock. After three o'clock but that's not the kicker here's the kicker Kanika is observed on video surveillance exiting an elevator on the lower level at approximately 325 Kanika is by herself as she listen because this is not the kicker just listen Wait till I finish. As she exited the elevator, Kanika is observed on additional video surveillance. Okay? On the lower level, here's the kicker. On the lower level and main lobby level. The lower level and main lobby level. Now, this is the reason why, including stupid ass Andrew Holmes saying that he seen her in the damn lobby area, which now you can see now that he was only speaking for the police he was only speaking for Crown Plaza he was acting as a spokesman he didn't see shit she was not on the main lobby she was not in the lobby put it that way she was not in the lobby they didn't see her in the lobby I'm going to show you what they're talking about when they say the main lobby level. Watch. Kanika is by herself and appears to be impaired as she is walking through the hallways. Kanika is observed entering the kitchen area. Listen, she is observed what? Entering the kitchen area on the main lobby level. So we know the kitchen that she went into that has the freezer there, right? That is on the main lobby level. That does not say she was seen in the lobby. It's just saying where the kitchen is located. The kitchen itself is located in the main lobby level. Meaning the same floor that the lobby is on. 
all right the same floor that the lobby is on or you can say the same floor that the um food food uh, the food court is on you can say the same floor that the, the the back door entrance is on that doesn't say that she's been seen coming through the back door just say that it's on that same level that same floor level so this is not talking about seeing her in the lobby it's just seeing her on the main lobby level so andrew holmes and yeah, we seen her in the, 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 the lobby area no it's lobby level so that right there shows this statement shows that Andrew Holmes, he was speaking as a spokesman for the hotel the whole fucking time. And he either misheard or misread. Because he wasn't speaking from his mind, from something he seen. He was speaking from something he either read or heard. Because he misread it or he misheard it. fucking idiots and then this some bullshit right here the next time someone is observed on the video surveillance by the kitchen area where Kanika was found it's approximately 20 34 okay now that's 8 34 we're not we already know the guy who walks up peace looks and then he walked back out the little short dude and we thought that he came right behind her but Found out later that it was like 8 o'clock later on that day. Well. Let's read a little further. speak with and arrange were made to pick up so and so with her and her mother at their residence and bring them to who was 16 years of age hmm let me see that might have been it that I wanted to show you but I continue strolling down just in case you want to read the rest Oh, no, 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 no. That's not the only thing I want to show you. Yeah. Um, the jacket, the Adidas jacket. The Adidas jacket. Let's get down to that. Okay. We're going to start right here. During preliminary investigation, hotel staff reported they received multiple threatening phone calls with callers stating they are coming to kill them. <laughs> Reference incident report number, uh, blah, for further details. The front desk attendant also stated he was being threatened by a member of Kanika's family. After hotel staff alerted us to the, to, to the threats, I spoke with such and such and other members of Kanika's family. I stated I understood they were going through a very difficult time, but asked them not to make any threats towards hotel staff. I explained there was no evidence at this time to suggest any hotel employee was involved in Kanika's death, and a thorough investigation was underway. A member of Kanika's family shouted, this is a homicide. Now, why would somebody shout that? Come on. Why would somebody shout that? Somebody, okay, you found out the child is dead found in the freezer P 
people sending threats to the to the uh, the hotel staff. Police come along. Hey, man, y'all just got to chill, blah, blah, blah. Somebody just shout out, this is a homicide. Why would a person feel like they need to say that? I'm going to tell you why. Because, first of all, they know that these officers was treating this case as if it was an accident off the rip. That's why they yelled out, this is a homicide. You probably even say it like they probably say, man, this is homicide, man. To let them know, nigga, we ain't buying that accident shit. We see where y'all going with this and we ain't buying that accident shit. So this is the reason why they yelling that kind of stuff out. And this is the reason why they threaten the hotel. Like, they know that off, off real. Okay, y'all want to say this is an accident already? Okay, this some cover-up shit. They probably done seen this shit too many times in Chicago, man. They know what time it is. Man, y'all y'all on some bouffale shit. Y'all already calling, you know what I'm saying? Our family, you know, an accident. You're telling us it's an accident. Off top. It ain't it probably ain't even been six hours. And you already calling it an accident. Probably ain't even on the gurney yet, and you already calling it an accident. How can you call it an accident when you stated for yourself in this same statement that you cannot see her go in the freezer from the surveillance? If you can't see her go in, but it did also say that they seen a light. They seen a light come on. They can see a light come on. That was a lie. It was a bullshit lie. We all didn't see that footage of thousand times not once have we seen a light pop up we seen shadow but we didn't see a light pop up so if the door is not visible to the surveillance camera then how can you say that this was an accident just by looking at the camera how can you say, oh, she walked in on her own? You know, was nobody in there with her? She walked in on her own. How can you say that if you can't see the door of the fucking freezer from the surveillance? How can you say that? It doesn't add up. So this means you have to do real police work. So either you was being lazy or you knew off back it's time to cover this up. Either way, your statements are proving it. Including her family member yelling, this is a homicide. Or, this is homicide. Let's go look for the inform the family members that Kanika was observed walking by herself on video surveillance and it would be premature at this time to jump to conclusions. But you jumped to conclusions and said it was an accident. Remember, you can't see the door from the surveillance. But you jumped to conclusion that it was an accident. That she walked in by herself. Yeah, you seen her walking in the kitchen by herself. But you don't know who was around that corner. You never seen her walk in the, the freezer. So you can't jump to conclusions that it's an accident because you seen her in the kitchen by herself. Does that does not mean someone wasn't around that corner when she went around that corner? That does not mean that someone pushed her into that freezer. You didn't see none of that. You didn't see any of it. So how can you jump to conclusions that this is an accident? But you want to tell the family don't jump to conclusions that this is a homicide. Okay. All right. I reiterated a thorough investigation was being conducted and the investigation will reveal any wrongdoing.
Uh, blood from the Everston funeral home was contacted was contacted at approximately 3.51 hours on 10 September. It's 3 in the morning on the 10th. Arrangements were made for Blank Blank to pick up the deceased and provide transportation to the medical examiner office. So and such arrived on scene at approximately 4.31 hours after evidence technicians completed scene processing. So and such prepared to transport the victim to the medical uh, medical examiner before the victim was transported. Of course, we know they all came in, examined the body. I mean, not examined the body, but Miss Teresa and uh, Lenora came in and identified the body. After the scene was processed and our identification <clears throat> was made, Sergeant Rose and I walked Lenora, Miss Teresa, and whoever else. Through the scene, we walked such and such you know, through uh, the kitchen area and freezer where Kanika was found. We explained Kanika was observed on video surveillance. Here it is. They saying it again. Observed on video surveillance, walking by herself through the kitchen area to the area to the area of the freezer. We explained the security camera in the kitchen area is motion activated. and pointed out where the camera is located. We explain, <clears throat> no one is observed on video surveillance prior or to the time. Yet I made a video asking why was the video, or why, why was the camera already running before Kanika even got in the frame of the camera? Why was it already running? Why? If no one was there with her, why was the camera running before she made it to the frame of the camera? You mean to tell me the camera just automatically know when somebody's about to pop up, oh, somebody's coming? No. These are motion activated. You stated it yourself, officer. These are motion activated cameras so therefore it takes motion for the camera to come on before someone walks in frame of the camera before someone walks in frame of the footage it takes motion so it took motion for it to be already running before Kanika walked into frame of the footage before she came into the camera it was already running yet no one was down there with her motion detected cameras motion activated cameras motion operating cameras on and running before she arrived in frame on several occasions the lower level bathroom the elevator both kitchens Just so happened that the camera's just already running. And here she comes walking into the, the frame. Okay. Um, let's see what we are. Okay, we're explaining the security camera in the, uh, in the kitchen area is motion activated and pointed out where the camera is located. We're explaining no one is observed on, yeah, all right. Um, let me see, we're explaining the only as accessible area to enter the kitchen is the area where Kanika entered. The only accessible area to enter the kitchen is the area where Kanika entered. Really, we know that there were multiple ways to enter that kitchen. Okay, 
So now we're hearing lies from the police now. Okay. And video surveillance would have captured the motion of someone entering the kitchen area before or after Kanika. And they did. It's just that the same motherfucker that you told to give you particular footage and put it on a flash drive and, and give it to you. They edit the motherfucker out. You gave them a chance to edit the people out. Therefore, this is the reason why the camera was already running before Kanika entered into the frame. Because you gave possible suspects a chance to delete any evidence. Because you failed to grab the whole hard drive. You left it up to them to give you surveillance on the flash drive. And this is another thing too. Okay. They defrosted the thing, right? They say they defrosted it, right? So upon viewing Kanika's body, blah, 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 stated in the period Kanika was crying. Sergeant Rose explained the freezer was turned off and the freezer doors were left open during scene processing. The freezer was turned off. The doors was open during scene processing by the evidence technicians, causing the wet temperature to rise above freezing in the freezer, Sergeant Rose stated. Icicles melted from a blower located above the area where Kanika was found. Icicles melted from a blower located above the area where Kanika was found. So this is causing water to drip on this girl, right? And this is the reason why Someone is saying that it looked like she was crying because of some fucking icicles melting onto her body. A crime scene. A death scene. Possible contamination. You could be erasing evidence. Or you could be tampering with evidence, destroying evidence, not by intentions, but because you want to defrost some shit. No, you put on your jacket and you go in there and you do your fucking job. You don't defrost nothing. How you gonna defrost something and then do the work? You should have did the work first, then defrost, and then did some more work. That's how that goes. What are we talking about? Why am I talking to so-called professionals? I haven't went to school for none of this shit, but I have come as fucking sense. Okay. All right. After walking, blah, 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 through the scene, we escorted them back towards the O'Hare to conference room by their family. Such and such, here's the Adidas jacket. Such and such told her family members Kanika was wearing an Adidas jacket and not her jean jacket. Now, a lot of people are asking how can anyone make that assumption if Kanika was already wrapped up like a cocoon on the gurney. The only thing you can see is her head popping up. You couldn't see nothing else. So how did she make that assumption? So... 
me read that again. Miss Teresa told her family members, I don't know if that's Miss Teresa. I'm just going, okay. I assume that's Miss Teresa, but it could be somebody else. Miss Teresa told her family members Kanika was wearing an Adidas jacket and not her jean jacket. I informed her or them that Kanika was still wearing a jean jacket. So here's an officer stating that he informed them, he corrected them. No, 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 no. She was not wearing an Adidas jacket. She was still wearing a jean jacket. This is in the statement. I'm not making this shit up. So there you have it. Now you know where the jean, now you know where the Adidas jacket thing came in. It came in right after reviewing the body. It was told to the family and the officer informed them or corrected them, no, she was not wearing an Adidas jacket. She was wearing her original jean jacket. And uh, such and such confirmed she also saw Kanika still wearing the jean jacket. So nine times out of 10, that probably was Lenora confirming that no ma, she was still wearing her jean jacket. So, um, they transported a body at approximately 5.10 September that morning. They removed any jewelry slash property from Kanika's person and turned the property over to Sergeant Rose and myself. Sergeant Rose photographed the, the property and the property was turned over to such and such on scene. The scene was released back to the hotel at approximately 5.32. A hold was still in effect on room 926 pending further investigation. But y'all putting a hold on, on the room 926, they done already cleaned the motherfucker up. They done already cleaned it up. So the only thing you can possibly, the only thing that that you can possibly find is maybe blood or possibly DNA. But I guarantee you it won't be on the sheets, comforters, because those things, well, a lot of times they don't even clean the comforters, they only clean the sheets. If you didn't know that, Sorry to tell you that, but yeah. <laughs> Most of the time, they only clean the sheets, not the comforts. So DNA or blood, possibly those two things that you probably find. Other than that, they didn't clean everything else up. And I know you're saying, well, that's all they need is DNA or blood, but still, they clean every, Ain't no telling what kind of cleaning they did. You know what I'm saying? They probably know a trick of the trades, too, and probably went in there and did some, some, some old DNA cleaning. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So to me, basically, they just let these people just do whatever they want to do, man. Just basically, they just let these people do whatever they wanted to do. They gave them too much time to get themselves out of a rut. They gave him too much time. They gave him a chance. You know what I mean? Gave him sort of like a leeway to keep them ahead. It's fucked up. And it's all right here in his own statement. It's all right here in their own statement. All right? 
We're not making this up. We're reading now. Okay? We're not just jumping on YouTube saying, yeah, well, this is what happened. Man. No, we're reading now. Let me see. Um, pending for an investigation prior to cleaning the scene. Oh, prior to clearing the scene. Detective Rose and I examined the latch mechanism on the freezer doors. The latch appeared to be functioning properly. Oh, we already heard about all that. The latch and open the door, both freezer doors are swinging and hinges on the left side. Blah, blah, blah. Y'all from... can read along too. I mean, it's like a jar. The interior freezer door does appear. Beta to open the door. The cooler temperature gauge indicated forty four degrees. At the time when evidence technician processed the scene, the cooler temperature gauge indicated 44 degrees and the freezer temperature gauge in indicated 34 degrees. However, as previously stated, the freezer doors remained open during scene processing. To get a more accurate reading, power to the freezer will be turned on again during subsequent investigation. There's no need for it. There was no need to close it and read it because that's not accurate to when and what happened. You see what I'm saying? That's not the, the that won't be the temperature that it was when the body was in there. You, you can't wait till the body is out of that and then now you want to close the door and let everything freeze back up and then take the temperature. No, that is that's not how it goes. So let me see. All right. This will conclude this session. I think I have one more thing to show you. September 28. Now, I don't know who this is. Um, let me see. I don't think it really says who it was. But anyway. On the above date. September 28. Sergeant Douglas and myself spoke to such and such at the above listed address. They stated that he was not, okay, he stated that he was not at the party in question on September 7. Why are they asking this person about being there on September 7? Because you have to remember one of the rooms was booked for September 7th. Don't forget that. He stated that he knew of Jenkins and heard of her death through mutual friends. He stated that he was hanging around his block in Chicago and was never in Rosemont either on September 7th or September 8th. This was confirmed through uh, later interviews with whoever whoever that he was not at the party that night and I'll leave you with that all right this concludes this this session and um 
I don't know what the next one will be, but I'll continue reading through the files and um, anything that I think I need for you to see, hear, anything. Anything that I know that you probably haven't heard before or probably haven't seen or you may need to hear it to um, confirm certain things that people been saying that probably was wrong or some shit. I, I'll put it up, all right? All right.